What's up everyone, it's Russo. I hope everyone is doing well. Please follow my Instagram at Russo Lifts just in case something happens to this YouTube channel. You can follow, message, and you can watch my daily story content on Instagram. I'll see you there. What is up everyone, it's Russo. I hope everyone is doing well. Today's ASMR sip is some cold brew. Comment down below if you want me to keep the ASMR sip or not. You guys have been pretty bitchy at me to take the ASMR sip off. Almost as bitchy as me to change my intro, but Argue in the comments below. Please like this video, subscribe, and click all you may get unsubscribed from this channel because it's a real ass bodybuilding channel. So be sure to search me every once in a while, Ryan Russo, and check me out on Instagram and hit me with a follow at Russo Lifts if you want to DM me any questions. I answer 20 to 30 people a day for free. Today's video is going to be a general PCT video, post cycle therapy, aka the drugs to harm mitigate the restart of the HPTA, the hormonal axis post exogenous androgen abuse. So I'm gonna be doing a super general one because I don't want people copying me right out the gates and not even going into you know the specific dosages. I pick different dosages for different cycles, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But I'll just go into in general how you have to approach PCT. So first off, right, all the people who skip out on PCT, you're the people who go around, oh, you know, steroids fucked me up for life. Like I was already fat when I started steroids and my gonadal system wasn't working right. And then I use exogenous androgens and fucking shut all my shit off. And then I use no exogenous drugs to help me turn my shit on. And I don't sleep right. I'm fat already. So my gonads aren't gonna really want to start after. So like now I'm low test for the rest of my life. When during the cycle, I should have gone shape at a high body fat and slept right and ate the micronutrient intake and had the right macro intake for natural testosterone to be produced and I should have did a PCT to rebound my HPTA because it's funny because people think like I've seen so many people's HPTAs after the PCT drugs clear sit higher their testosterone sits higher if they actually got in shape on cycle sits higher after their PCT drugs have cleared. Their testosterone rebounds the baseline or above baseline. That is completely possible. Now, if you're already fat and using PEDs as a crutch to try and get in shape and you realistically don't get in shape, meaning you don't get your body fat to a legitimate 11, 12, 13% and have good sleep, good natural fat intake for hormones, and you bounce back your HPTA by using a PCT. If you skip all that shit, then the odds of it not coming back to baseline are much higher than someone who just got in shape, ran a PCT after, and maintained training hard after. So if I'm saying if you're fat, use PEDs as a crutch, shut your shit off, and then Stay fat and then come off with no PCT. Why are you crying wolf? Shut the fuck up. I'm so sick of that. It's all the time. It's in my Instagram DM box. Like, did you not do any research before you decided to fuck with your biochemistry? I don't know. You tell me. Anyways, today going into the PCT. So the things you got to consider is how suppressive is this cycle? Is it a minuscule dosage of S4, which is going to cause suppression and not shutdown? Meaning as long as you're luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone, like if you get blood work done, if your LH and FSH are still turned on all the way during a minuscule anivar cycle, a minuscule SARM cycle, or like a tiny testosterone cycle, and you're only suppressed, the chances of your shit rebounding back to normal are super high because it never got fully shut down or are we jumping into a trend cycle a s23 cycle rad 140 cycle a halotestin cycle a cycle with extremely high dosages like over a gram of testosterone where you are going to go hypogonadal you are going to have a full hpta shutdown that's going to require a whole different type of pct that's going to be really hard to recover from versus a minuscule cycle where you just dip your toes in the water, get your little results for your beach body and go about your way. If you think you're one of these guys, I gotta jump into a hardcore cycle. Well, guess what? It's harder to restart your HPTA. And at some point, you guys also gotta weigh in and I've done a video on this called blasting and cruising versus cycling. And you go watch that video where I talk about if you're constantly gonna be abusing androgens, what is the fucking point of stressing out your HPTA? if you're just gonna shut it back off right after you bring it back. At that point, you're like, okay, am I blasting and cruising for a long period of time? Am I staying on forever? Because all these people like, I'll, I'll get Instagrams in my DM box at Russo Lifts. Well, I wanna do this cycle right after I recover from this cycle. It's like, oh, I wanna stress out my body. I wanna fluctuate all my fucking hormones. I wanna fluctuate 
my estrogen and then just shut it all back down you know people used to do the time on versus time off rule where like i don't believe in this rule but people would do it to, so you don't fluctuate your shit all the time is that you know, the amount of time on would be the amount of time they took off. You're eight weeks on your cycle, you take eight weeks off and recover. Now, it's not really good if you're trying to build an enhanced physique that's easily maintainable, but if you're just trying to do a couple cycles to get your base muscle and go about your way and recover your HPTA and walk away from exogenous androgen abuse, then cycling is a good thing. If you are gonna do this extreme cycle, do a PCT for four weeks, wait for your drugs to clear at week six, seven, and then immediately go back on, what is the point of that? What is the point of doing the harsh PCT drugs? What is the point of doing all that work to restart your HPTA, the mood fluctuations, everything, if you're just going to shut it back down? Now that those caveats have been addressed, let's go into PCT compounds. So first off, right, your LH, luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone, the signalers to your testicles are going to crash if you're on a high enough dosage of an androgen. With something like Ostrine at the dosage of five to 10 milligrams a day, something like S4 with the dosage of 25 to 50 milligrams a day, those SARMs aren't going to shut down your HBTA, generally speaking, all the way off. If your LH and FSH are still reading while you're on the SARMs, you're in the clear to make an easy recovery. That's why people say it's easy to bounce back from SARMs because in the right dosages, they fully don't shut you down certain SARMs. Same with Anivar in a low enough dosage. Let's go into Trembolone, Halotestin, over a gram of testosterone, these cycles are going to most likely shut you down, meaning your LH and FSH are going to read zero. You don't want that. That causes hypogonadism. That starts the shrinking of your balls into fucking nuts to raisins, to pebbles, to fucking poof, they're gone. Yeah, you can actually lose your balls completely, basically. So what do we do here as the biohacker? We would add in exogenous synthetic forms of LH and FSH. Exogenous form of LH that's synthetic is what? HCG, exogenous form of LH and FSH, synthetic form, HMG is LH and FSH combined. HMG being the best, HCG being enough. So we add in HCG, HMG on cycle as the synthetic signaler to keep the balls receptive to receiving the signal. Now, there's been a lot of debate on if you can, you know, over set, like if the sensitivity of doing too much synthetic LH signaling fucks up, you know, the tes testicles. We don't have hardcore concrete data on if it upregulates and ruins the sensitivity. I don't know, I'm not going there. I'm just saying that you want to do a dosage to where your balls maintain a normal size, but not a dosage to where your balls are massive, super physiologically swollen because roll of thumb, it might happen. You could desensitize yourself from your own luteinizing hormone, follicle stimulating hormone. From what I've read and argued with, with multiple people, it's not possible. I'm still going to err on the side of caution and say, you want to play around and figure out what dosage you respond to that just maintains your testicular size during the cycle of a normal testicular size. Now I blasted the fuck out of HMG. I blasted the fuck out of HCG. Normally to see if the sources on my source list are legit or not, I'll just blast it and my balls will get bigger than normal, like super physiological nut size. And I don't think that's good to redline HCG, HMG like that because you could downregulate yourself to your own LH and FSH because your own LH and FSH are only going to be so high. So by keeping that closer to the reference range on the blood work, we are kind of harm mitigating the fact that you could desensitize yourself to your own LH and FSH. So that being said, on a cycle that is going to shut you down, you want to utilize HCG, HMG on cycle and know that these are not post cycle therapy drugs. You do not want to add these post cycle. These are synthetic synthetic mimetics. They are fake signalers. They are drugs that are used to be the fake signaler on HRT <clears throat> when you won't be making your own LH and FSH to maintain fertility, to keep the lights on with the nutsack, to cause an easier HPTA rebound in theory. So you would add those in. I'm not going to go into specific dosages. If you want me to set something up, just message me on Instagram at Russo Lifts and I try and get to 30 people for free a day, but not doing blanket carpet dosages that people will copy. So you would do that on cycle. This would maintain your testicular function. This would maintain spermogenesis. This would maintain semen volume. This would maintain fertility and this would maintain natural testosterone output as the synthetic signaler is just replacing what the HPTA would be using to signal the balls if it did not detect these exogenous androgens in the body and decide to shut down. Now, 
going into post psychotherapy you would cut the hcg hmg out because they aren't synthetic signalers they are suppressing your body from making its own lh and fsh if it notices the lh and fsh is off the charts from you exogenously adding it in as hcg hmg what do you think it's gonna do it's not gonna fucking turn its own lh and fsh on so you gotta take those drugs out and then you gotta switch on to serms such as Novadex, clomiphene tormiphene and clomiphene now there's perks and benefits to all of them. In my opinion, you would do a combination of Novadex and Enclomiphene and Clomiphene, and you would start very high and pyramid down the dosage for four to six weeks, and then realize that your real blood work won't happen until four weeks upon cessation of Clomiphene or Enclomiphene because the half-life is one week. Meaning every dosage, every daily dosage, you're stacking a half-life of one week. It builds up extremely high in the system and you have to wait for the clomiphene to get out of your system. That's why you notice UFC fighters always pop pop for clomid because they're trying to get off whatever PEDs they're abusing around USADA and clomiphene takes forever to clear the body. You have to realize that you cannot just go on clomiphene and clomiphene and then go get your blood work done right after because it's going to be a fake number because the clomiphene and clomiphene is jacking up your natural testosterone. So you would do that, you would taper off as you're tapering off the clomiphene and clomiphene and no, well, the clomiphene or enclomiphene paired with Novadex. You would then be still training hard, still dieting hard, sleeping right, natural fat intake, body fat to be relative to making a high amount of natural testosterone, meaning your body fat should be 10 to 14% to a point where you would naturally make a lot of testosterone anyways, despite the exogenous androgens, meaning you have to be in shape by the end of the cycle. If you're fucking fat coming off, that's gonna impact your total T number. Meaning anyone who's fat probably has low testosterone unless they have really good genetics and if they got skinnier, their testosterone would go up. So you can't be fat and wondering why your HPTA never rebounded. So you would do all those variables and then you would slowly taper off and then you get, could add in something like ectosterone, turkosterone, a natural testosterone booster after natural herbs to increase testosterone. You could add in DIM, you could add in DHEA, stuff like that, natural stuff like that to help the body recover furthermore, and then you would be PCT, have the best chance of HPTA rebound. And like I said, there's a lot of compounds, that's a lot of money added to the cycle, that's a lot more foresight, a lot more planning than say, jumping on a cycle, jumping off a cycle. It needs to be premeditated, pre-thought out, dosages all need to be schemed, and you need to realize that when you come off, you gotta be at a good body fat, you wanna be at a good stress level, and you wanna have good natural fat intake and have the macronutrient and micronutrient intake set up to maintain good optimal natural testosterone. If you're fat out of shape and come off cycle, don't expect your HPTA to rebound, because it's not gonna rebound if you're obese anyways that's why you know obese people can't get their dick up and shit it's simple keep that in mind don't use peds as a crutch to get in shape you should probably already be in pretty good fucking shape if you want to go on peds otherwise you're gonna be one of these people bitching at me in my dm box that you know they're shut down for life after where if they would have watched this video they would have been huh maybe i should get in shape before i jump on exogenous androgens and see what my body can do naturally instead of using them as a shortcut and crutch or huh maybe i will spend some money on pct compounds because i'm already spending money on exogenous androgens to fuck up my hbta why am i not using all the tools in the toolbox to restart my hbta as well as fertility medications to maintain my testicles on the cycle you tell me i'll see you guys in my next video